Hello everyone, welcome to our channel Career Stock. My name is Ranjit Sharma, and I'm an agile consultant based in Netherlands. And at Career Stock, we invite industry experts from around the world to share their real experience with us. And today we are going to discuss Scrum Master interview questions shared by our WhatsApp community members. And to help us with the questions, we have Anupriya Sinha with us. Uh, she is a program manager based in Toronto, Canada. Uh, she has uh, over 13 years of experience and played various roles like business analyst, scrum master, and a project manager. She has led various cross-functional teams to successfully deliver large projects at TCS, Globant, and now at Magisco. Uh, but before we start, I have a small request. If you find this session helpful and want to support us, please hit like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out future episodes. All right, let's get started. Uh, welcome, Anupriya, and uh, thank you for joining us today. Anupriya, over to you. Thank you, Sunan. Thanks a lot for having me here. Uh, I have been, I have moved to Canada, and during my job search here in Canada, this channel has been so effective. You can get answers for various type of roles, and I actually went through all the all the questions that were here. Everyone explained it so well. So thank you for creating this channel. It's super helpful to everyone across the world. Wonderful. Uh, Sunand yeah. already told about me. So yeah, I'm Anupriya Sinha. I have 13 years of experience in various domains and across the industry. I'm currently based in Toronto, Canada, and I'm working as a program manager in Majesco. Wonderful. Okay, so if you allow, shall we start? Sure. Okay. So the very first question is, uh, you are in a sprint planning session and uh, let's say one of your team members seem confused about the difference between the product backlog and a sprint backlog. So how do you explain the difference and uh, how do you make sure that both are managed well during the sprint? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes. So this generally happens uh, because, you know, not everyone is as well versed with Agile as most of us are. So as a scrum master, it's very important to wear your coach hat and explain to them that a product backlog is a different entity from the sprint backlog. When I call talk about the sprint backlog, so it's basically a subset of the product backlog. The sprint backlog comes from the product backlog, but the sprint backlog contains only that item or those items that can be completed in that particular sprint. Uh, in explaining to them, I can also tell them that the product backlog is very dynamic because it is dependent on what the market is going on and it is subject to continuous refinement and reprioritization. But the sprint backlog remains fixed for the sprint because it allows the team to focus on completing that committed work without disruptions. So that is something which can be explained to the team. And also, it's very important to let the development team know that these are the specific tasks that they are going to do. And that's why it is the sprint backlog. So in a nutshell, we can say that the program product backlog contains everything that we might work on in the project. But the sprint backlog is containing just the things that we'll work on during this particular sprint. Uh, I hope I answered the question. Sinan. Yep. Thank you. Uh, wonderful. I normally take an example of a, a menu card. So let's say, think, <laughs> yeah. think product backlog is like a menu in a restaurant. So it contains yes. all the dishes, you know, features and the work items available for the customer, the business to order from. And mm -hmm. the sprint backlog is like a specific meal for the chef or the team uh, that is yeah. being prepared for this particular, you know, service that is a sprint, right? Yes. So, and generally, uh, yeah, sorry, please go ahead. So they don't, prepare everything uh, on the menu, just those specific dishes or the task uh, chosen for the specific meal. So yeah, I mean, yes. yeah, that's just come up. So it's yours. Yeah, okay. correct. And uh, like, I remember in one of the instances when we were start, uh, just starting with Agile, I think back in 2015, 16, there was a team and I had given an example of uh, when you are uh, like building your house, you don't build your entire house in one go. You have the plan for the entire house, it might change. But when you're building, you're building just one section of the house. So that was one uh, example that I had set uh, in the starting area. Okay, wonderful. Okay, um, okay, like, I think we can move on. Small, one more small point is just like, I mean, if we can also tell them about what is the product goal and a sprint goal. 
that's mm -hmm. also a little bit helpful uh, in that context of sprint backlog and product backlog because yeah anyway so that's good and think we can move on to our second question okay so let's say your uh, product owner wants to add more tasks uh, during the sprint so already ongoing mm -hmm. and but the team is already like fully over load and they are you know their workload is maximum yeah. so how do you uh, work with your product owner to prioritize like what the team should focus on so finally if we go through the scrum guide we always know that the product owner is responsible for setting the priorities for the product backlog that's why he is the product owner he or she uh, whereas as a scrum master um, our role is more responsible for helping the team prioritize their work during each sprint but more often we come across the situation that you just described and it's very important at that position that the product owner and the scrum master work collaboratively to ensure that the team needs to work on the most valuable items as a scrum master it's my role to help the product owner understand that he or she needs to align the priorities with the product's overall strategy and it's very important to let them know the team's capability the velocity and align the highly prioritized tasks according to that because only if as a scrum master i'm working with the product owner i can ensure that everyone is working effectively and everyone needs to contribute to the success of the final product so that is very important for the product owner to know the capacity of the team and what has been the velocity and so that they can assign the highest prioritized items for the particular sprint true true and yeah that's good so yeah i mean uh, we can discuss how you know we can like weight the business impact like how these uh, new tasks yeah. can compare in terms of business value against the already committed work into the sprint backlog so yeah this will help us to prioritize more effectively and we can also uh, facilitate the trade offs so we can uh, yes. consider replacing low priority tasks yeah. so if the new Absolutely. tasks are more important you know work with the product owner to maybe to remove or to deprioritize the lower value task from the sprint backlog mm. so uh, that's that's something also we can do and then impact on the scope for sure so we can discuss the trade off clearly with the po we can highlight mm. that if the new task are added without removing the other so the risk of missing the sprint goal is increased over the period of time and of yeah. course we can offer some kind of alternatives we can move uh, task to the product backlog we can suggest moving the new task to the product backlog and we can consider them for the next sprint so mm. yeah i mean yeah. all these mid sprint review adjustment and things like that we can always do that we should maintain yes. the transparency in our communication across uh, the team yeah. uh, with the via the, the product owner so yeah yeah you want yeah. to add anything and, and, and uh, you know it's it's at the end it's all about the prioritization that the product owner does Absolutely. it's all about uh, the highest priority items plus what is the urgency of those items to be created so that that is the foundation of what is to be done and at the last like i mean um, though the principle is responding to change but it's important to stick to the sprint backlog as much as possible and sure. uh, yeah i mean um, we should remember the principle like responding to change but if the new work is truly critical work with the product owner to make the reasonable adjustment but with the clear but we should be very clear about the consequences what going to be impact on that yeah yeah sure. i think yes. wonderful great Okay, so let's move on. Uh, so our third question is: Your team is midway through the sprint, and uh, team is falling behind, and they may mm -hmm. not meet their sprint goal. So mm -hmm. how would you support your team? You know, to get back onto the track and to help them to deal with all these kind of challenges. Yeah, I I think this situation is something which every scrum master must have gone in their life once or twice or even more than that. Um, i think you know we need to think about the three pillars of the scrum guide here transparency inspect and adapt transparency because it's very important if the team is not able to do that work if they are not able to complete it as a scrum master as the development team we need to be transparent to our stakeholders about it when i say uh, inspect and adapt so see uh, not finishing is not failure that is one of the key things that we need to incorporate in the team if you're not finishing it it's not a failure but if it's a one off situation 
it's fine it's normal and sometimes uh it might have happened that the team must have overcommitted or aimed a little high for what they can accomplish in this particular sprint in that case what we can do is we can uh, talk to the product owner focus on what can be done and maybe identify a way to deliver something valuable at the end of that sprint however if it becomes a habit of overcommitting then that becomes a problem and then we need to do a proper root cause analysis is our estimation model not effective uh, why are we overcommitting so these things need to come up in our uh, retrospectives and discuss see because what happens if we are missing a sprint goal on a regular basis we are going to impact the end goal and most likely towards the end we may need to add another sprint to the release maybe even remove work from the release so it's very important that the team needs to understand because we all are working towards one common sprint goal and on a broader horizon a product goal so the team needs to feel that this there there can be a consequence and we they or in fact the entire team will be accountable for explaining that extra sprint or removal of work that conversation should be part of the sprint review the planning meetings so if they are missing it just one off I don't think so. It's a big problem. Having the transparency with the product owners, stakeholders, we can always look at what was missed and adapt it in a way where we are delivering something which is valuable. But it should not be a consecutive thing that is happening. True. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. I think you have covered pretty well. So I don't need to add anything over here. Okay. So let's move on. Um, let's say our uh, there are like two team members. They are arguing during a sprint and. Uh, starting to affect the team's progress so how do you manage these kind of conflicts and uh, keep your sprint moving forward yeah anu um yeah so uh, it's been a group of people are there whether it's agile or waterfall anywhere uh, conflict has to arise because not everyone is made of the same temperament but uh, what happens generally is when there is a conflict the team members they often struggle to put forward their opinion in which they want to put it forward because what happens is they are afraid of the feedback backfiring on them uh it's very important to understand what is the problem so in such situations as a scrum master our first job is to identify the problem and to do that we need to give a fair chance to every team member or the team members who are involved in that conflict to raise their opinions the problem that they are facing should be viewed through multiple perspectives and the team should be involved as a scrum master i need to ensure that there is a fair code of conduct there no unnecessary interruption and every positive and negatives are aligned on the table once that is done i think then everyone should everyone's opinion should get heard with open ears no interruption in between and there there might be situations where both of them are correct then we need to find a way how to overcome the problem so as a scrum master what i generally do is i ask them the conflict you are having on this problem does this align with the ultimate goal that we have they need to be educated with what is the ultimate goal of this sprint and if we are able to resolve it by collectively speaking listening or understanding it generally resolves and it actually helps because you know you are have to having open conversations with people uh, anything you would like to add here sunand no that that's perfectly okay i mean the only thing is like what i seen people start taking sides so it's important to remain neutral and you know avoid any yeah. taking any sides of any any individual so your role is to mediate uh, mediate this kind of situation right not to judge yeah. anyone so make Me sure that both the yes. individuals feel comfortable sharing their thoughts with you that's very important and bring them together like mm -hmm. understand both perspective like individually maybe you can facilitate a private uh, session with both of them uh, mm -hmm. to understand like what is happening and you know then later on you can help them to resolve this particular conflict so set the expectation that they should focus on uh, finding a constructive solution and not assigning a blame to any one of them right exactly so yeah. sometimes I mean, yeah 
Yeah, I, I I agree with what you're saying. Sometimes it happens that it becomes it turns out to a blame game, and people tend to take the eye off the ball. But for us, for the scrum master or the development team, everyone's goal should be whatever you are doing should enhance the product that we are creating. That end goal needs to be there. I I absolutely agree. And as a scrum master, as a facilitator, it's very important for him or her to be very neutral. and not take sides absolutely agree with you correct and we should like guide the uh, conversation by focusing on facts rather than emotions because when these kind of conflict happen like both both the individual and the teams are like full of emotions they don't think mm. rationally that way so we should uh, encourage them to communicate openly about their impact uh, the conflict right on the work that that should be the yeah. focus area as you mentioned about the sprint goal right and then yeah i mean we can help them to identify the areas where they can align or at least compromise on few few of the part right sure. so yeah. we should remind both both the team members or the rest of the team that focus is on achieving the sprint goal and delivering the value to the customer right so this yes. can basically help us to shift uh, their focus uh, away from their personal issues towards the common objective which all the team members are uh, working towards right so yeah, yes. i mean uh, we can do that we can emphasize the uh, importance of uh, collaboration Absolutely. teamwork yeah. um yeah things like that so we can do that okay uh, i think we are good uh, or even in some cases we can create some kind of work agreement also like if the conflict okay. will happen uh, in some of the cases so what what we are going to do like we can uh, uh, you know we can develop a clear working agreement like how they will going to communicate and collaborate uh, in terms of if there is a if these agreements are you know expectations mm -hmm. around their uh, behavior you know decision making processes and handling the disagreement we can create a kind of working agreement that okay if you want to communicate with this and this and this so this should be the way of communicating sometime it happen that people are sitting at i mean one locations people are sitting at other uh, locations mm -hmm. so yeah. we can have yes, yes. those kind of working agreements uh, sometime people just send some email and then they expect the return i mean very soon mm -hmm. but then it will take some time for other people to respond so yeah i mean we can have those kind of working agreements that how you want to communicate that yeah. also going to help a lot of yeah. lot of things. agreed agreed and uh, this point that you have mentioned about working agreement i think this will this is a take away for me as well from the session uh, because currently where i'm working it's a remote first organization so thanks for that yeah and you have to constantly monitor the situation because it yes. it's has I mean, maybe it's a small spark but then so just observe the team dynamics what's happening uh, even even after the conflict is resolved keep an eye on like how the team members interact to ensure that the issue does not surface resurface again and again right mm -hmm. and uh, if required maybe you can offer some additional coaching or facilitating some conflict resolution trainings uh, for the entire team also and yes so yes. just keep on uh, check the progress how the how the team is doing uh, participate in their daily scrum calls just to see like oh, what are the ongoing blockers are happening yeah. Uh, yeah i mean so these are all the things these are the small additional things okay i think we can move on uh, okay so your team members uh, tells you that they feel stressed uh, with too many task in the sprint so how are you help your team to manage the their workload and you know to reduce the stress stress uh, stress or burnout uh, yeah, it, it yeah. generally yeah. Yeah. yeah so it what? it generally happens um i think as a scrum master when i'm starting with the team uh the stress or the burnout doesn't come up in one day it's it's a incremental build process up. it's a build up correct uh, as a scrum master it's very important for me to observe my team and when i say observe uh, just take an example of daily stand ups as a scrum master i can listen for signs of stress or burnout during the daily stand ups when people are giving their updates that there are there have been instances where people say i was working late night to complete this if this is one time it's fine but when this goes on that will slowly slowly go ahead and build up to the stress and burnout which will come back to uh, the team later second thing that i do is i 
always have those regular check-ins with the team you know uh, not a formal one on one meetings you can always have a very informal check-ins to just see how they are doing and that helps people to open up and speak about them and when you're doing those regular check-ins you know you can understand there are because people uh, there might be someone who thrives under pressure but there might be the other person who will struggle under pressure as a scrum master i need to know my team members very well i need to recognize that yes different people have different thresholds and there are different responses to stress from my end if i have to proactively do something to manage the pressure uh, and i see that there's something going on we will have to balance the workload if i feel that a high pressure period is coming i need to plan accordingly to balance the workload and manage the stress level with the team i can sit with the team and see that if a redistribution of the tasks with their ability to handle it might help uh create that space within the team you know where they can discuss and manage stress uh nowadays many companies many organizations are focusing on the mental health there are a lot of sessions i as a scrum master should encourage my team that at least give some time to managing your stress however you like so it's very important to promote a sustainable work pace to prevent this stress and burnout so i think that is something which is very important true true we can also think of you know setting up the realistic goals sometimes you know what happens the goals are not realistic at all we try to achieve a lot of thing in just one go uh, try to set a realistic goal limit overtime as much as possible all this will lead to a healthy work life balance once you have a healthy work life balance it's very rare to have stress uh this this is from my personal experiences because you know generally what happens when the time of the deployment is coming in i feel that the team starts gets burning out it it, it happens so these are a couple of small things that we need to do it might it might not look very huge but these small things would definitely help the team members true okay yeah yeah so uh, of course uh, just to add on to it that uh, we should review our current sprint backlog uh, with the team and uh, with the product owner to assess whether there are too many tasks or if some tasks are or user stories are unnecessarily complex and they are just added into it right yeah. so we can yeah. work together to reprioritize few of the items uh, if required we can focus mm -hmm. on delivering the most critical features aligned with the sprint goal first not like mm -hmm. everything we should uh, able to deliver right and sometimes it happen that some of the uh, tasks are causing lot of stress due to their complexity so if yeah. we can help the team to break down um, uh, those uh, complex start into smaller or more manageable tasks this allow for a steady progress right and that can yeah. make the workload feel less overwhelming so that might be the one of the case other thing is like if we can start putting uh, whip limits so if we can mm -hmm. help the team to limit sure. their uh, working progress you know so by yeah. focusing on completing a few tasks at a time rather than multitasking across too yes. many tasks yeah. right so this can also reduce you know a, a cognitive load on onto them right and uh, that will also increase a sense of fulfillment accomplishment right that okay they are able to at least finish these many tasks so i mean uh, normally stress happen when we know that we are able to deliver something but we are not able to deliver on time or something like that mm -hmm. then we start mm -hmm. feeling that kind of stress you know so yeah. yeah i mean we we will never going to have a stress which we know that we are not going to achieve <laughs> we yeah. will have <laughs> only stress when we know that okay this thing we are supposed to do but we are delaying we are, it. We are delaying yes. it right yes. so yes. then only we will have a stress right so i mean yeah so I, you already mentioned about realistic planning do not set goals for yourself or your team mm. you know so maybe if that is happening maybe we can work on the estimation part right yeah. maybe that is uh, one of the reason that our teams are doing that and of course we can look into our uh, capacity planning mm. uh, we should uh, reduce all these unnecessary efforts uh, sometime people busy in lot of other activities apart from their yeah. work which we not, never factored in our capacity planning so that to ensure that team does not take more work than they can handle uh, within an actual time available so there's actual time and then 
something the time which is there on the on the time sheets and all which is never yes. going to match so yeah i mean yeah these are the i think uh, small things which we can also do that okay and this is a common problem across almost every team stress and burnout because if the planning is not correct yeah you mentioned it correctly we need to ensure that the team has a very healthy work uh, work life balance yeah and uh, we should like encourage people to speak up in the perspective as well right um, <laughs> we should come up yeah. with some, some uh, kind of like okay what we can do about it is it like to do poor estimation or is it like some unexpected blockers or is it some mm -hmm. external pressure from the product owner or from other stakeholders right so as a scrum master we have to try to find the root cause uh, at least so yeah. this kind of problem will not happen similar kind of problem will not happen in the future sprint right True. and yes. um, based on all those discussions we should agree on some concrete action items mm -hmm. uh, if we are not going to close those action items actually we are not going to work on those then this problem will keep on coming so yes. yeah i mean we can work on our planning we can work on our estimation and things like that so these are the small small things but then of course and at the end of the day we should be behave like a supportive leader so as a mm -hmm. scrum master you should also provide some emotional support to your team you have to reassure them that it's okay not to complete everything uh, in this particular sprint it doesn't mean that uh, the sprint is going to be fail Uh, yes. right so we should focus on maintaining the quality of the work rather than mm -hmm. just uh, finishing everything you know so both are important the quality of the work and the well being of uh, of our team members so we should yeah. recognize It's their efforts yeah yes. we should recognize their efforts we should keep the appreciate moral them. high appreciate yeah. them we keep their moral high for the team so yeah we should celebrate their wins even the small yes. wins uh, along the way we should always do that sometimes we forget so mm -hmm. we should acknowledge their progress whatever the progress uh, which they are making right so all these things are uh, things but then yeah it's is definitely going to help true okay so let's move on okay so let's say you notice that your uh, uh, team is making progress but then their progress mm -hmm. is slow and uh, your stakeholders are asking for some kind of update so how do you track or track the progress of your you know uh, team and you can keep your stakeholders informed about uh, any any disruption to the team um so i think for tracking the progress in a sprint uh, or communicating it to the stakeholder um, nothing is better than the sprint burn down chart yeah it tracks the completion of the work throughout that sprint you compare the time and the amount to work, amount of work to complete you measure it in story points or hours either ways but it it actually helps predict a team's ability to complete that work in the designated time uh, also i think uh, if we talk about on a larger level to measure the product progress uh, you can utilize the product burn down chart which shows like how much work is remaining in the product backlog or have a product road map something like that so that is for product and if i am talking just in the sprint the sprint goal the definition of done even the daily scrum or the sprint review these are the main events so if we are following what was decided in the sprint goal we just uh, adapt expect what is happening adapted regularly and collaboratively we will be able to let the stakeholders know where we stand today true okay so uh, i can add couple of things over here that sometimes what happen we should have a we should have a kind of cadence based uh, uh, communication with the client right so it means yeah. like our update should not be random uh, we mm -hmm. should have some kind of cadence let's say even during the mid sprint updates we call them so okay. we can you know uh, summarize like weekly summarize the outlines uh, whatever the key progress the whatever the milestones which we have achieved in in that particular week you know any road blocks any kind of risk any kind of impediments right so the mm -hmm. idea is just to keep your stakeholder informed uh, without yeah. disrupting the team's work that's important so we can yes. always share the uh, milestones uh, with the with the mid sprint check-ins basically or demos also we can plan if if required mm -hmm. like if your stakeholder is so much demanding we can also do that and of course oh. uh, sorry yeah i was just uh, like adding on to it uh, so in the current organization that i'm working uh, they have a wonderful thing of uh, using a live dashboard 
and uh, when we are using that live dashboard that is updated every day so and it is accessible to the customers to the internal stakeholders and it helps a lot to for anyone to go and check in the sprint progress so this is something i came across uh, in this organization and i found it very helpful it's an aha dashboard and it's a live one so any time uh, the stakeholder or the customer they want to know the progress they can just check it there what what has happened in the sprint till now so you know using that live dashboard we can actually remove having those daily meetings with the customers if anyone is having so just wanted to add that point there yeah yeah i mean that's what so most of the time uh, our stakeholders or client will have access to the jira trello or whatever as you devops uh, tools yeah. whatever we are using so they can always come and look into it at a real time basis what exactly we are having important thing yeah. is it should be updated most of it the should. time team members forget and uh, it's a yeah kind of pain for us but then yeah we should encourage our it's team like, members to Yeah, to it's like it we have all all these tools of the universe, but we need to know how to keep them updated. That's very important. True, true. Okay, I think we can move on. Okay, uh, okay. So the next question is your uh, uh, the product backlog has uh, uh, requests from different stakeholders, and they all think that their features are more important. So. how would you help your product owner to manage these uh, conflicting uh, priorities you know and uh, keep everyone aligned with the with the business goal uh so when this comes uh, as i mentioned earlier it's very important for a scrum master to align with the product owner's vision because the product owner is the one who is talking to the multiple stakeholders and if we have to do we need to talk about the urgency matrix now what should be prioritized in a way for example if we have a phone uh, let's go ahead with example or uh, take an example of an aircraft if i'm having a project of an aircraft i need to ensure that the seating arrangement is done before we are actually going ahead with the ticketing process so the stakeholder who is actually owning up the ticketing process has a feeling that my uh, my priorities are higher but as a scrum master i need to align with the product owner and, and have him explain it to the stakeholder that unless you have the seats arranged how are you going to go ahead with the ticket process how are you going to have your tickets what will be the seat number unless and until it is done and also helping them to understand that what is my team's capability to complete that task the team should also be aware that there is a sequential way of completing tasks so helping the product owner is very important in this such scenarios because uh, if product owner is not able to prioritize it would slowly funnel down to the team in the product uh, in when we are going ahead with the sprints we might work on something and let's say i'm uh, the team is working on item a and after some times we get an item b in the next sprint there was no impact analysis done and it breaks whatever was done in it uh, in the first sprint so helping the product owner prioritize understanding the strength of the team understanding the urgency and the prioritization is important great yeah wonderful there is one more thing which we have done in our project we have something called parking lot backlog okay. yeah. so mm -hmm. we can have like we can have features parking. that are uh, yeah. uh, i mean valuable but not immediately critical so we can have a kind of secondary backlog or a parking lot where all these kind of requests can uh, be there until mm -hmm. the team has capacity to address them so address this shows stakeholders that yeah i mean their requests are not forgotten but are reprioritized for later consideration so that's something yeah. also we can consider yeah yeah the mosco rule can also apply here yeah yeah i mean yeah that is for prioritizing the workload uh, for yeah. sure but then yeah i mean this is like little different like have an entire different backlog which we know that okay we are going to pick up because we already have hmm one main product backlog but i mean this is like one alternative hmm. but then of course we should help our product owner to say no True. or not yes. now that's important it's not like uh, sometimes hmm. product owner are new or they don't have that much experience or you know things like that so there are times when certain requests cannot be accommodated uh, in that uh, uh, in that in that short term so we should help our product owner to 
confidently say no or not no. in this sprint uh, you know so but of course by some giving some good reasoning behind it like mm. why is not been needed or yeah. why we are not going to do because yeah i mean the business value assessing it right. Absolutely. yeah assessing it right? so definitely. there are a lot of factor the business value the current workload of our team and the resource limitations and things like that mm. so yeah all this can be considered okay good so let's move on okay so uh, during the sprint an uh, unexpected technical problem comes up that was not planned uh, this is something mm -hmm. which is unexpected so now team is into um, kind of split like whether to fix it now or they can continue with the planned work so how mm -hmm. do you manage these kind of situations to balance both the issues and the sprint goal? Because it looks like it's a candidate for a technical debt, maybe in future. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, if, if we face something like this and we identify that it's a technical issue and uh, it's during the sprint, so it's very important first to prioritize the task by first assessing what is the severity of this issue? And secondly, what is the impact that it will have on the goals, the sprint goal? So if it is something which is very critical and it will prevent the progress, then that should be prioritized. So it's very important to analyze, analyze that issue and uh, what is their effect on our key deliverables. So this would be the first and foremost thing. Uh, if, as I mentioned, the impact is high, resolve it, prioritize it as a scrum master or even the development team if we are doing this it's very important to be transparent to the stakeholders we need to ensure that we are communicating this and uh, because we are changing the prioritization so we need to ensure that we need to communicate this to the relevant stakeholders they need to be informed proactively but if we find that this is not something which is like super uh, urgent just flag it as an imp impediment in Jira. So um, in my previous organization, we used to do this. Whenever we had something like this, we used to always flag it as an impediment in Jira, uh, just updated based on the impact, the urgency and severity. And uh, later on, maybe whether it's a stand up or somewhere, we can bring it to the notice of the entire team and the stakeholders. And we can discuss it there, that this is something that we uh, found it. And we want to take it up in the next sprint. So this is how something which is a major technical issue, but not very impactful at the moment, we can take it up in the next sprint, only after discussing it with the uh, stakeholders. OK, yeah. yeah. OK, thank you. Uh, let's move on. So let's say your uh, team has been you know, following uh, same processes for a longer period of time and uh, things are getting routine they are bored with a couple of things so let's say for example your retrospective so how mm -hmm. would you introduce new ideas or the improvements to uh, keep things fresh and encourage innovation uh, so as a scrum master our role is actually very uh, uh, written by the book uh, through the scrum guide and all but uh, i think as a scrum master we have the opportunity to be creative we we wear a lot of hats we are a facilitator we are a, sometimes we tend to feel as a coach uh, as you mentioned in the previous uh, session uh, discussion we also provide emotional supports so we have a lot of hats uh, hats to wear and uh, if you give an example of the retrospectives before covid everyone used to come to office and our retrospectives were always face to face so as a scrum master, I don't think so. I innovated much then because it was face-to-face -face communication. But uh, during the pandemic, as a scrum master, I had to innovate a lot in the retrospectives, uh, even in the daily stand-up meetings. I needed to uh, create several different kinds of retrospectives to keep the team engaged. It was very important. Because when people are not in front of you, they tend to wear off. So having, uh, if you go and check in the internet, there are a lot of different ideas how you can do retrospectives. I used the kite one, the boat one, so many different ideas. Do something creative so that when they come into the meeting, 
they are not just coming to say what went well what didn't go well what are the action items they know that they are following a process in something which is different than the regular excel sheet that we have been doing uh secondly as a scrum master i think we need to provide them with uh, some time where we can hear the development team's ideas you know innovation and ideas go hand in hand uh we as scrum masters we need to ensure that they have that uh, ability to come up with ideas uh maybe have an idea portal uh talk to the team and tell them that uh, if you have any ideas to improve the team go ahead add it there it may be picked up it may not be picked up but at least the team gets to do something different uh incorporating stakeholders feedback that we get during sprint reviews or even other interactions so fostering that culture of continuous feedback is also very important so these are not something which comes by the scrum guide but you know these are something which we need to do to ensure that we are trying to do something different uh as a scrum master i need to keep honing my communication skills and uh, uh, there are multiple organizations you, i can do trainings i need to ensure that i'm able to communicate with my team properly so those are lot of there are lot of ideas where we can like innovate ourselves as a scrum master as well true so uh, what uh, we do like we have uh, we organize lot of innovation sessions so we set up dedicated workshop or a, a brainstorming yeah. session that focus on yes. innovation so these can be fun and uh, it's a creative yeah. space where team members can collaborate on new ideas yeah. without any pressure of immediate implementation that's important uh, we yes. introduced a lot of different techniques like design thinking mind mapping or a uh, collaborative games to stimulate that creativity and you know to generate some fresh ideas so as a scrum master we should you know play with these kind of different techniques we can also uh research like how other teams or organizations are innovating yes. within that agile framework right so we can mm -hmm. share those kind of insights uh, with 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 the teams and we can discuss how the similar you know practices can be work for us um, so that's something we can also invite some external experts or yes. other teams to share their experience and ideas about innovation in 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 various practices which we have so we have to yeah. keep on experiment with the with the new practices right so we should uh maybe like we can encourage the team to experiment with some new tool or practices on a mm. small scale yes, yes, right yes. but uh, uh and then we can see like okay what's whether it's going to work for them or not right so we can introduce some uh, anything let's say you new retrospective technique or new estimation technique or some planning games or different mm. formats for, yes. for doing certain things but then bring that new ideas and uh, implement them that's important and monitor them right yeah you may let's say one new practice yeah. at a time and set a time frame to evaluate its effectiveness maybe okay we'll going to because nothing going to work immediately so set some timeline and yes. this will make easier to uh, assess the impact and adapt based on the feedback so we yeah, are these are the yeah. traditional True. things which we can do and uh, uh, like we had started at a previous organization uh, like uh, fun fridays with ideas and uh, you know you uh, initially there would be no ideas in the group and the reason was because everyone thought oh my idea is very silly so as a scrum master it was very important for me to like add first my idea i need to lead by example so i added some ideas and i i explained to the team nothing is silly whatever you feel put it there because everything we will just check it out evaluate it and just go ahead with the effectiveness and then you know the process started rolling so giving that them that space is also very important correct true okay uh, thank you no let's move on uh, so the next question is let's say you made a mistake during a sprint and okay. that caused some um, issue for your team so how do you uh, take the responsibility first of all for that particular thing and how you going to fix the situation uh so as a scrum master if i talk about if uh, i can take a leaf from my personal experiences when i had initially started uh, as a scrum master um, and i i used to treat the daily stand up meeting as uh, you know those uh, status reporting meetings so that was something which was not correct uh, i it went on for some time but uh, you know it it came 
as once i opened up with the team so it came as a feedback and also i had a like good mentorship in that organization and it was explained to me that no no the daily stand up meeting is not a status reporting you need to ensure that your uh, team is self organized to discuss among themselves so that that is the process and that is so it was something which i owned up i agreed that uh, yeah it was a mistake that i was making by treating you know, a dsm as a status reporting meeting and slowly i started mentoring the team on self organization and to such a point that even if i am not available i felt very happy that the team was able to discuss everything on, on their own in a time boxed manner so this is a leaf out of my personal experience that i did but uh, even if you are doing something uh, which you feel that it should not have been there i need to ensure that there are avenues where i am also getting feedback it should be a 360 degree feedback system absolutely important because if if there is something which i did not do correct i would add it to a lessons learned register when i'm closing the meetings towards the end i need to put it out there in the retrospective also that okay this was something which i did uh, i cre- uh, corrected this error in this way and how i will ensure that it that doesn't happen in the future so no scrum master is perfect it's all about continuously improving ourselves and you know utilizing the experience that, that we go through to deliver better product and have a great team yeah thank you for sharing that example i have many stories but then <laughs> one i can share is that yeah i mean during one of the sprint planning session um, yeah i mean i facilitated the estimation of user stories for that particular upcoming sprint and um, there are a lot of pressure uh, to meet the deadline so i encourage the team to commit to an ambitious number of user stories without considering the complexity of the task that is involved mm-hmm. so as the sprint progress we realize it become clear that the uh, workload was far greater than which we anticipated into the beginning and that lead to the again the a lot of stress and uh, lack of progress people are struggling here and there so i understand that and then i yeah acknowledge the mistake that yeah, when i notice that the team are struggling to keep up the sprint commitment so yeah, i should do a uh, session with the with them to address the situation i admitted that i had underestimate the complexity of the user stories and that i rushed uh, the estimation process so yeah i mean that's something which i have done so we assess the impact but okay um, mm-hmm. uh, what is their people are frustration they are seeing their experiences so yeah i mean everyone is a uh, little stressed but what we can do in that situation i will just we just uh, ask our product owner we ex- we tell them very openly that okay this is the situation this is what happened and so i de- immediately reach out to the product owner all the yeah. different stakeholders to inform them about the situation and i explain them that how initially the estimations were flawed and the impact uh, it had on the team ability to deliver on time is is visible so i emphasize it that okay let's let's realign with our uh, sprint goal again and mm-hmm. uh, yeah i mean that's a lesson for me that time that okay we should not push something to our team otherwise it's not going to help anyone so i mean yeah. uh, we have to adjust our <laughs> sprint plan yeah. nothing else like we can do on in that kind of situation but it's a lesson learned yeah uh, and and we all learn from our experiences right so uh, i mean if you see in this session i i had so much uh, so many takeaways that i might go ahead and implement in my current project so we learn from all the experiences that we gather absolutely absolutely okay uh, wonderful let's see what we have okay i we are just reached at the end cool so yeah uh, uh thank you anu and thank you everyone um for joining us today Uh, into this session and uh, we hope that you found this session helpful and informative so if you enjoyed this session please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and we hope to see you in our next session until then take care this is tunu sharma signing off thank you bye thank you. and uh, thank you new one more time thanks a lot thanks a lot everyone yeah